promoting heritage tourism along the Civil War trails. I said, oh, 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 that's for me, that's for me. So I went out and I auditioned and I've been working with the Pennsylvania past players since then. Now Thaddeus Stevens in particular was, was assigned to me, but the more I've read, the more fascinated I've, I've become, the more I've wanted to, to, to learn. So I'm very grateful to PHC for giving me a, an opportunity to expand my knowledge and to dig a little bit deeper into Congressman Stevens. Hi, welcome to the program again. Thank you again, ma'am. I have another question, but for Mr. Anderson this time. After listening to uh, Congressman Stevens speak, it seems he's a very kind-hearted gentleman. And I was wondering, after he was talking about helping the poor and orphans, I just wondered, how does Mr. Anderson feel about these particular issues, and how does he interpret that the congressman feels himself internally? Oh, my. Huh. <laughs> Suppose I shouldn't expect a, a, a young woman with, with whiskey on one hip and a pistol on the other to, to throw me a softball, but I, I, was, I was saying that I, I started out with Thaddeus Stevens as, as an assignment and I've been more and more interested the more I, I, I've read. I've also found that the, the more I learn about him, the, the, the more I find to, to, to like about him. There are some things that he, he went a little bit um, <clears throat> overboard with. Um, it's one thing when today we, we talk about somebody ha have going on a witch hunt seems a little bit different when people 200 years, almost 200 years ago, are, are talking about a, a congressional hearing being a witch hunt. Uh, they are a little bit closer to um, being able to know exactly what they're talking about. But uh, many of the, the causes that Thaddeus Stevens stood up for are things that I, I, I believe in, in myself. And I, I will admit, I, I, I somewhat tend to shy away from the whole anti-Masonic thing just because it takes too much to, explaining to, to, to explain to people that the group is not today necessarily what it was 150 years ago. Back when if you breathed a word of secret rituals, you might disappear and then turn up dead. Uh, so I, I, there's a little bit of picking and choosing, but there's a great deal I, I, I do respect about, about Mr. Stevens. Welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm Pat Greenewald. And I was wondering, you mentioned several times about illnesses that you experienced uh, near the end of your life, and I'm wondering, what was the nature of the illness that you mentioned several times? Well, Ms. Greenwald, uh, first of all, I, I should, should say I, I'm, I'm in, in, in perfect health, aside from a little bit of a shoulder problem. But uh, Congressman Stevens, it's never been entirely clear to me exactly what went wrong in the last years of his life. Um, he, he battled throughout, throughout his life a club foot. Um, in his 30s, he had a, a terrible, terrible fever and, and lost all, all his hair, wore wigs from then on. Uh, in the very last years of his life, if I have ever, ever read about exactly what the illness was, I'm not sure what it was, I, I can tell you that he, he was a, a, a teetotaler ever since a, an old college friend of his died of alcohol poisoning. He'd never touched alcohol. In the last few years of his life, his doctor told him, you will drink a little bit of alcohol each day or you're going to die, Mr. Stevens. He said, do I have to? And he said, yes, and grudgingly agreed. But what exactly the ailment was, I'm not sure. Mary Rittner joins us again. Your comment or question for Steve. Hello, Mr. Anderson. I understand that you have feelings of an abolitionist as well as Thaddeus. I would like to know that how you feel about the colored troops not being paid fairly like the white troops. I understand that the white troops made $13 a month and did not have to take out a clothing allowance and the colored troops made $10 a month and had to take out a $3 clothing allowance. Do you think that this was really fair? Um, certainly not. Certainly not. Neither did, did, did Thaddeus. He, he worked and worked and worked to, to get equal pay. Took three times introducing legislation and fighting it through in Congress and being defeated before he finally managed to pass the legislation for, for equal pay. In fact, he, he went a little bit further. He said that if anyone is going to be paid more, it should be those who risk more. All soldiers risk being killed in, in battle, but the black soldiers were risking being taken as, as slaves, were being risk, risked being shot after they, they had 
surrendered. So he actually argued that they, they should have been paid even more than the white troops were. You can imagine how that went, off, went over, but I, I respect that, that uh, level of, of commitment to fair play. Welcome to the program. I'm Susan Schubert. Um, early on, as uh, Congressman Stevens, you talked about fighting for the rights of women, but I didn't hear any too many details about that. Could you give us a little more information? Uh, for example, in education, did you fight for the rights? Did he fight for the rights of girls as well as boys? Thank you, Mrs. Schubert. Now, I have to confess, um, I have not had a chance to, to, to research Thaddeus Stevens's work for women in great detail, um, largely because I just haven't found very much research into his, his work for women. There are references to it, um, but it's not what the biographers, for instance, are most fascinated with. Um, I do know, I do know that, that when the public school in, in Gettysburg up on, on High Street opened, that it was open to, to both boys and girls, not to black students, hence his creating a, a separate school. Um, I, I will tell you also something fascinating I, I learned not, not very long ago that might give you some insight in, into perspectives that people had at the time about girls in education. When the Gettysburg Academy, where Batty Stevens was, was a trustee, when it went co-ed, and it did go co-ed, the, the, the parents of Gettysburg accepted the idea that boys and girls should be educated even perhaps at the same place. They added a second front door. Boys went in one side, Girls went in the other, no hanky-panky in between. So I, I, I do find that fascinating, the, the idea that, well, girls should be educated, but we're not quite, not quite comfortable with, with, with co-ed in, in a modern, mixed kind of sense of the word. Um, I'm, I'm fascinated with, with what I can learn about his work for, for women, but I, I, I know only, only so much. Um. Hi, welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm Linda Reese. Hi, Steve. I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about the reenactment of the Grand Review of U.S. Colored Troops that's coming up in November here in Harrisburg. Certainly, Linda. And thank you, by the way, for the, the loan of the replica of the, the Gradual Abolition Act of 1780. Now, As, as Congressman Stevens, I, I like to say that I, I, I know what events are going to be once my, my, my campaign manager in, fills me in on, on, on the details. Uh, so I know some things about what are, what's coming for the fall. Um, I know that they've been beating the, the bushes to put together, together 100 largely young black men to, to reenact the grand review of the colored troops. So there's going to be, be a whole series of, of, of events this fall. Um, a number of, of very, very prominent scholars are going to be in, involved in it. Um, Henry Louis Gates comes, comes to mind. Um, and there's going to be, as I say, a, a reenactment of, of the, uh, the, the parade ending up at, at, well, what Thaddeus likes to call the John Harris Mansion, also known as the Simon Cameron Mansion, but not to him. <laughs> uh, and I know there are going to be a whole series of, of events. Um, there is a, a, a history center downtown in Harrisburg on, I believe, Market Street, where they would have all of the, the details for you. But I can't give you all the details quite yet. Uh, I also know there's a great deal of work going on in recovering and restoring some of the, the, old, uh, the old colored troops military cemeteries as well. Uh, about time. Having come to know this character so well, Steve, how do you think Thaddeus Stevens should be remembered? Oh, my. Well. He's been remembered bitterly for a, a long, long time. Uh, there are finally, in the last few years, some more positive, um, more, I would say, fair-minded biographies being done. Uh, and for a very long time, people who have been interested in, in Thaddeus Stevens have had to, to scrounge here and there for, for bits and pieces of places to, to go. Um, I, I, I thank Mr. Fultz for his, his work out at, out at uh, Caledonia, the, the former Iron Works, now State Park. Um, but very excited that in about two years, I'm told, uh, Thaddeus Stevens' old house on South Queen Street in Lancaster is going to be opening as a, a museum and a, a history center. 
Uh, very exciting to see that come together. Thaddeus is looking forward to being able to invite Simon Cameron and, and James Buchanan to come to his house for a change. Now, how should he be remembered? I, I tend to think of him as someone who was, who was ahead of his time. Uh, we talk about the, the civil rights movement in, in the 1960s as something that, that was new. To a very large degree, what was new was that 100 years after they were written, the, the 14th and 15th Amendments were finally going to be enforced. Uh, those were his, his creation, his, his, his brainchild. Uh, so I, I'd like to think that he'd be very proud of the, uh, the, the world that we, we live in. Uh, a little bit concerned about some things, I'm sure. There's always more work to, to be done. But I, I like to, to think of him as, as someone who was ahead of his time and saw what this nation could be if we put our minds to it and decided to, to, be, to be fair and to be eventually, hopefully, colorblind. In the last few moments of our program, Steve, how about sharing a final thought with us about Thaddeus Stevens? Absolutely. In fact, I'll ask my friends from, from the 19th century to, to join me. Now, I started tonight talking about Thaddeus Stevens and how he became an abolitionist. Now, pretty much any abolitionist, anyone who, who truly believes in a cause, you'll find a moment of epiphany, revelation. So I'd like to leave you tonight with a few words written by another man who had a, a, an epiphany, had a revelation. He had been the captain of a slave ship, a man named John Newton, until he saw the light, met the Lord, as, as it were, and he wrote down his thoughts, not in law, but in music. I, I heard someone, someone mention Amazing Grace. So I ask you, if you will, to join me, and I ask the three lovely ladies to join me as well. Amazing Grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. What a fascinating performance and discussion. We have learned so much from Congressman Thaddeus Stevens and from Steve Anderson and friends. Thanks so much to them and to our wonderful audience for sharing some great questions with the Congressman and with Steve as well. And of course, one more time, we want to thank our host, the National Civil War Museum in Harrisburg. Remember that Humanities on the Road is a joint project of the Pennsylvania Humanities Council and the Pennsylvania Cable Network. And for more information on the program and all the other activities, of the Humanities Council, please go to the website pahumanities.org. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Tracy Matisak. See you next time.